AI experts say we're building virtual worlds so real we can't tell the difference anymore, and one of them says he's almost certain we're living in one. A UK scientist thinks information itself might be physical, which could mean reality is made of code, and some researchers are hunting for glitches in space looking for tiny flickers that could prove the universe isn't natural at all. These are disturbing clues we're living in a simulation. Dr. Roman Yampolsky, a computer scientist at the University of Louisville and expert in AI safety, was on the Diary of a CEO podcast about a month back. One of the questions he was asked is if he thinks we're living in a simulation. In his words, he's almost certain we are. They mentioned Google's Genie 3, where you basically just put in a prompt and it'll spit out an AI image, but not just an AI image, it's like a 3D image, actually more like a full-on landscape you can explore and interact with, and it looks better than most modern video games. I mean, we're not far off from it looking just as real as the world in front of your actual eyes. And that's kind of the point. The doctor said, well, if we can already create limitless virtual worlds that are almost indistinguishable from reality, the chances that we're living in one are actually pretty high. Most of the episode is dedicated to the dangers of AI though. And let me just warn you all, if you wanna have a good day today, maybe don't watch this podcast. If you work in AI though, or are one of the billionaires funding this stuff, uh, you need to watch this. Basic summary of the podcast, the doctor says humanity uh, is just done if we continue along this path. And that's within the next couple decades, maybe even less. There's just virtually no good that can come of this. You've heard people say information is power, right? Well, a scientist from the UK named Melvin Vopson thinks information might actually be a real thing, meaning a fifth kind of matter. We already know about solids, liquids, gases, and plasma, at least some of us know about plasma anyway. That one doesn't come up quite as much in daily life, but Bobson says, well, maybe information itself could be another one. His idea is that every particle, like an electron, carries data, almost like a tiny computer file. He's planning an experiment where he'll make an electron and its antimatter twin called a positron crash into each other inside a piece of metal. Normally, they destroy each other and make energy, but he says if you also erase the information they hold, there could be extra energy released. If that really happens, it would mean information has mass. Basically, if you deleted a file on your computer, your computer would weigh just a tiny bit less too small to ever notice physically, but still there. Most scientists think this is a stretch, but if he's right, it means bits of information are just as real as atoms. Now, what does this have to do with the simulation theory, though? Well, if information has mass, it's something real, not just numbers. And the whole universe might be made of data. Every particle, every atom would just be a piece of stored information. It would mean we're not just surrounded by information, we are information. Some scientists are testing if the universe has bugs in it, meaning like video game glitches. There's an experiment in Illinois called the Holometer that tried to find one. It used two super accurate lasers to see if space itself shakes or flickers at a super tiny level. If it did, that would mean the universe might be made of tiny digital bits, like pixels. The idea was that if both lasers got out of sync, could mean space has a kind of static to it, a sign that we're living in something built, not natural. So far, nothing like that has shown up. The scientists said space seems smooth, not pixelated, at least where they can measure. But astronomers are also studying the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. If they ever find strange patterns or repeating marks in that light, it might mean something's off with the way the universe renders itself. And here's a weird idea. What if everything around you, space, time, your body, is kind of like a hologram? That what we see in 3D could come from information written on a 2D surface like how a holographic sticker looks 3D, even though it's flat. This idea started when scientists like Jacob Bekenstein and Stephen Hawking studied black holes. They found that what falls into a black hole depends on its surface area, not how big it is inside. Basically, all the information about the stuff that falls into a black hole, like its mass and energy, doesn't depend on the inside of the black hole. Instead, it depends on the surface around it, called the event horizon. All the information is stored on the outside edge, not inside. 
That's really weird, because normally you'd think the bigger the inside, the more information it could hold, but that's not what the math shows. Later, scientists from the University of Southampton looked at tiny ripples in the leftover light from the Big Bang. Again, the cosmic microwave background. They were looking for tiny patterns or ripples in that light that might give us some clues as to how the universe came to be. If the universe works like a hologram, some directions or areas in space could show unusual alignments, say patterns that repeat. Well, they did find a few strange patterns. It's not definitive proof, but there is a chance it's a sign our universe is actually stored on a flat 2D surface like a projection. This is kind of unsettling. Scientists think space and time might have a smallest possible size. Think of this like zooming in on a photo. At first it looks clear, but the closer you get, the more you start to see little squares, pixels. The universe might work the same way. There's a point where you just can't zoom in any further because reality itself gets pixelated. That point is called the Planck scale. It's so small, it's basically impossible to picture. Way, way smaller than an atom. At that level, space stops being smooth. It's more like tiny, invisible building blocks. Some scientists think that time could work that way as well. Not as a smooth flow, but as tiny ticks, like frames in a movie almost. Earlier this year, researchers published a paper called The Reevaluation of the Planck Scale in a Discrete Framework. They argued that space might not just seem grainy, it might actually be made of little pieces. Another idea called the generalized uncertainty principle says if you try to measure something smaller than that limit, physics itself stops you, as if reality has a maximum level of detail. Now, that sounds a lot like what you'd expect if we were living inside something that had been programmed. Back in the early 2000s, theoretical physicist James Gates noticed something strange while studying supersymmetry. That's a theory trying to explain how all the particles in the universe fit together. When he broke down the math, he found patterns that looked exactly like error-correcting codes. That's the kind of digital code built into your computer or phone to stop data from getting corrupted. It's what makes sure a video doesn't glitch or a file doesn't break when you save it. Gates described it like finding computer code buried in the equations that run the universe. He compared it to the same kind of structure used in web browsers. and. He's not talking about a metaphor. It's literally the same type of logical code used in modern computing. Now, not everyone agrees this means the universe is programmed, of course. Some scientists think it's just a coincidence that this code shows up because the math that we use just happens to be efficient the same way computers are. But it's still weird to think that the rules behind reality seems to use the same logic that our technology does. Most of us would assume that if we are living in a simulation, there's some kind of intelligent entity running it. Aliens, you know, future versions of humans, yada yada. But there's another twist on the simulation idea that doesn't involve any higher power, so to speak. Instead, some scientists and philosophers think the universe could be self-simulating. That means reality is creating itself. There's no computer sitting outside our world running everything. The universe is the computer. One of the biggest names pushing this idea is Dr. Brian Whitworth, who's written several papers comparing the universe to an information system. The basic idea is that consciousness, the fact that we're aware of being here, might actually be part of the code that keeps the simulation running. It's a loop. Reality generates consciousness, and consciousness keeps the simulation stable by observing it. Eh, hard to wrap your head around, but it does connect to real physics. There have been experiments that show some tiny particles don't decide what they are or where they are until someone actually looks at them. Some researchers say maybe that's how the universe saves processing power in a way. It only renders, for lack of a better word, when something is watching. Kind of like how in a video game, it loads the graphics only where the player is looking. And here's the biggest issue with this whole simulation thing. There's really no way to definitively prove or disprove it. Even if scientists found what looked like a glitch, a perfect simulation could just fix it instantly. We may never know if what we see is real or just a simulation. Physicists like Sabine Hassenfelder and George Smoot have both said that while the idea is fascinating, it's also basically impossible to confirm. There's no experiment that can separate base reality from a simulated one if the simulation is flawless. And if the simulation theory is true, then 
even you know all your, your tools for testing it, your equipment, your thoughts, your, your whole logic. It's all part of the simulation as well. That's what makes this topic so unsettling. It's scientific, but it's also philosophical at the same time. So until whatever's running the simulation reveals itself, I mean, if that ever happens, we're just stuck with a question that might not have an answer. With all that said though, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.